All right, I need to be honest. I wasn't gonna film or make videos for this whole month of April for YouTube. I even posted that with my Life Club community. I really sat with it. I really sat with the idea thinking that I'm not gonna post, I'm not gonna share until I got this nudge. I don't know if it was a nudge from the Holy Spirit, but I got a nudge and I just started seeing or like remembering names. I'm remembering Mira Forex. I'm thinking of Lou FX, uh, Kieran, Malcolm, all these people. And I'm thinking, it's not even about me. It's about them. It's about serving them. I've been super consistent with YouTube for the past two months, which I don't think I've done that in like a few years, I think. And all of a sudden I'm like, I need the self-care month and I, 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 blah, blah, blah. And the moment that I stop looking at myself, but then I think bigger picture of other people, of my inner world, my community, the people I impact, influence, which used to scare me by the way, but what a blessing it is to actually have a positive impact, a positive influence. Like selfishly, I wanted to just have a, I guess a, a smooth sailing month and stuff, but <laughs> oh gosh, the reality is, Yes, of course I want smooth sailing, I want easy, we all do, but it's not gonna get me to ultimately where I wanna be. You know, I could have it easy for this month, but then I'm gonna feel like crap, probably at the end of every single day. Like, I will feel like I'm not serving to the best of my ability, I'm not leading to the best of my ability. And it's just so funny, it's so ironic because we all do that, not just in my context now, but we do that whenever we want to, I don't know, let's say with trading, the most obvious thing, we want to have the idea of the freedom, but the idea of the hard work, we're just like, nah, let's, let's not do that. So we fall into comfort, this temporary comfort, which we think it's okay, because it's easy and it's what we're used to, what's what we're familiar with, and any form of unfamiliarity, it just seems so, painful and we don't want to do it so we stay comfortable but ultimately it makes us feel even worse the more we prolong it so i just thought i'd be honest and share that because i was just taken aback thinking yeah i wanted a you know just a more chilled out you know april it's also my birth month i was thinking yeah i'll like do some introspection and and like reflection and you know i'll take it easy i'll take it slow self-care vibes and you know at the end of the day i was like wait it's not always about me. Yes, of course, I will look after myself. I will still reflect and spend time with myself and nurture that. But wait, I know I get some of the biggest inspiration and energy from the people I give energy and I inspire. It's it's so cyclical. This is This is like an amazing cycle of positivity, of authenticity, of vulnerability that can actually end up a snowball effect from someone on the other side of the world that I've never met before and they are crushing it because of me because I'm inspired by other people's stories and they're inspired by my story so it's just like why you stop that so I don't know I think I've said a lot of things this is I don't even know the world's longest intro but hey this is a bit of documentation on the reality of just what went through my mind today which is Thursday April 4th so in conclusion I was so, you know, I was so down to not make a video and then something just nudged me to say, you're gonna wanna make videos. And I know a part of me was like, I want it easy a little bit, you know, birth month and self-care and all this stuff that society may sometimes tell you to, to take it easy, but sometimes you just have to die to your flesh, die to your desires of wanting to take it easy or have a nap. And if you're called to something greater, you have the capacity for it, because I know I do then you just gotta do it. Be obedient and just go for it. But yeah, I think I just maybe hit that limit thinking, oh yeah, I was consistent for two months, oh, I'm good. Nah, let's break that level. And I feel empowered even now saying it and and yeah, don't worry, I wasn't gonna be lazy this month. I have monk mode. It's so funny, you're seeing it real time, guys. Sometimes when you make progress in life, when you hit a goal, comfort wants to bring you back, like thinking, oh, you're good now, you've done it, you've pushed. Nah, that's the time when you have to break through that, like I'm doing now, maybe tell a safe group, or for me, I feel like I'm exposing myself to, to, uh, <laughs> to YouTube, but it happens in life, man. You get a goal, you're consistent for a little while, part of you thinks, oh, you deserve to rest, or you deserve to just slow down. No, 
we can't do that because that becomes habitual or at least for me I know I can't have that mindset and I need to look at it in terms of gratitude that wait I get to be in this position it's not like I can't do it I know I can those are like the little thoughts and my reflections just word vomiting on you guys at the start of this video I'm gonna chop this video down like massively because I know it's a bit of an intense one to start a video off with but welcome to the video and I hope you guys enjoyed the rest of the vlog give it a thumbs up if you I don't even know just give it a thumbs up because vibes <laughs> interesting is when we put liquidity or the theory behind liquidity which we know rests above highs we should anticipate some sort of pullback first now of course there's going to be times where price might just do a little flick down and then push up but usually to some sort of let's say pd array but what's interesting here is you know i, I don't want to use nfp week as an excuse but i think here it still sticks to the theory and to the um the whole point of market structure so we've sort of taken these highs, price sort of wicked into it, catching people on the wrong side of the market, those who try to buy uh, above, let's say, double tops, um, or they see this momentum, they get a bit excited. So again, catching people on the wrong side of the market. Then we see the big four hour retrace with the candle. The reason why I'm looking for shorts is we have lots of PDRAs down here in discount which price may want to most likely balance towards. It could either get to the midpoint of the FEG or here. Uh, but yeah, I'll definitely be looking for shorts in this area just because of market structure. If we look at it from a different standpoint, um, let me see, higher high, higher low, higher high because higher high only gets confirmed once we break low. Uh, and then again, we kind of took it out here. You, you can't see it from candlesticks, but then we get a trend change let's say from here it looks different when we're looking at the candles but bear with so usually when this happens you need to understand that we're going to get some sort of pullback so uh longs in this area is very aggressive very risky something i wouldn't personally like to get involved with if anything i could do this um and yeah want to get involved more either in a short term short or Get involved in a long and more high probable areas especially just understanding the kind of um nature of the week we're in it's a poor area for a long definitely looking it at it at the most you know exhausted area if you're gonna take a long definitely down here or somewhere just before it kind of just broke out but then anything from that we're just anticipating some sort of pullback so i've really been getting into chess or actually just kind of watching chess streams. I've been having it on the background when I'm working or something like that. Um, I've also been following a girl and her mum who commentates her um, tournaments. I just find it so cool because chess players are able to think many steps ahead and be able to think and focus under time pressure and to be so tactical or play positionally. Um, basically just being many steps ahead and anticipating, you know, if my opponent does this, then I'm going to do this, or if I have to do this, then my opponent might do this, etc, etc. I find it so cool because it reminds me of trading. And like sometimes you can over calculate things, you can over analyze things in the market in the same way in chess, and you can get analysis paralysis. You know, you're thinking of too many moves, you're thinking of too many options, or maybe there's too many signals going on in the market, that you're just going to get confused. And I just find it so cool how they are so focused. They're so strategic with everything and it just, yeah, reminds me of trading. But yeah, I'm a big fan of chess so far. I'm not good at it at all, but I appreciate, you know, chess players and, and just the skill and all the study and mental training that it takes to, to be a good chess player. I think it's, yeah, very, uh, it really can translate into trading. Uh, so I guess that's why I 
in my downtime or, you know, <laughs> I've been watching a lot of chess streams or just listening in. Fantasies I've got Fantasies that were driving down the boulevard You hold me close and all the scars are gone I should say I don't look I think I've just been super in the zone or present with after coming back from traveling and then obviously just spending time with people in life club and ensuring like integration with the new members with the current members is just going well and smoothly um, and yeah we're getting ready for monk mode which is happening the day after this video goes out so on the Monday uh, so yeah just just I don't know I don't know what to film sometimes but I'm trying to like just share what I'm doing and what I guess I'm gonna be doing. I guess I always just wanna continuously say thank you so much for your support as always. And you know, I do notice a lot of you who comment, who support the channel um, and yeah, super grateful for that. You know, like I can't, it just blows my mind that I get to do this. And like, you know, I was listening to a podcast the other day and it was Ed Milet's, I think it was Ed Milet. Like there was a formula for happiness. One being having your mission, your purpose. Second being gratitude. And third being discipline. And I think gratitude is so important. It's just the one thing you can add every single day in your life to then just, first of all, helps relieve stress. Stress? <laughs> helps relieve stress. Because really when you, you know, you get in this overwhelm of like maybe tasks in your day, being very busy, whatever story or narrative you tell yourself and then um, when you're grateful, you just kind of focus on what you do have, what you can control and yeah, what's there in front of you rather than all the things you don't have, all the things that you're trying to work towards and gratitude is just like a superpower, I think, and it's just one thing you can literally add right now in your day, three things that you're grateful for. Zooby dooby doo. Silly chicken nugget. Beautiful sunset over here. I'm very sweaty. This has become like my form of fun cardio. Who's to blame when you're all out of chances and nothing is going your way? Let's just see how bad this gets. I'm 30 something. 